Hamilton. All right, so you're welcome to this video, a continuation of um, the terms used in describing vectors, which we started in the previous video. All right, um, we continue. And then before we continue to this, yeah, talking about three-dimensional planes, something just flashed through my mind, and so I decided to explain it, how it works. You know, when we have the X and the Y axis, Okay, this is two dimension. It, 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 you know, the three dimensional graph, whatever it is, it will always be 90 degrees. All of them will always be at 90 degrees to, to one another. And I want to use this to demonstrate it. So this one and this one like this, they are 90 degrees to each other. You see that? So this is like the Y axis, the X axis. If you have anything here, that will be the negative Y. And then if you have anything here, that will be the negative um, so that would be the, let, let this cap represent the arrow, okay? So if you have anything here, that would be negative x. You get that, but it's still 90 degrees. Okay? 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Now, if you're having a three-dimensional um, graph, it's going to be like this. A 3D graph is like this. You see that? This is the z-axis, 90 degrees to this. This is um, the z-axis... 90 degrees to the y, 90 degrees to the x. And then each of them too can as well have their negative sides, okay? Like um, a perpendicular like this, then it can also have this. This is for the negative um, z axis, the negative um, um, x axis, the negative y axis. You get as it goes. So that's how it goes. All right, so let's just um, come back to this. Okay, so now the zero or the null vector. All right, the zero vector or the null vector is a vector whose magnitude is zero. You know, like the unit vector is the vector whose magnitude is one. So the zero or the null vector is a vector whose magnitude is zero. Now, there are about two reasons why a vector could have a magnitude of zero. Number one reason why a vector could have um, a magnitude of zero is when it has been, um, when a vector is um, being added to the opposite vector. Like, for instance, if I have a, a free vector, I'm still going to explain that one later. Let's say I have a vector, vector A, maybe, maybe, maybe this is A, B, like there is a displacement in the direction um, from A to B, there was a displacement. Maybe an object is here and I pow, and I displace the object, I push the object in this direction, and the object fled in this direction from A to B. All right, so if this thing falls here, um, if the object displaced from here to here, okay, and then there is another displacement in an opposite direction another displacement represented in an opposite direction. And in this case, we have the two vectors are equal. So, so we're having it this way. Let's say this is C and, and D, okay? If you want to add the two vectors, vector AB plus, like the resultant effect of the two vector will be AB plus, plus CD, right? Good. So, but because AB because the two vectors are exactly equal, they are exactly equal to each other, but in opposite direction. So you can say that, that you can say that CD is in the opposite direction as AB. That is, it's negative to AB, because you can consider that AB is an x-axis, and then this one is like the negative x-axis. Because if we were to place it here to continue from here as what? As um, CD, okay? It should be like exact negative of what we have. So we say CD is negative of AB because it is facing um, an opposite direction to AB but equal to AB. So at the end of the day, you can say um, resultant, that is the overall effect of the two of them, is equal to AB plus 
instead of writing CD, we can say plus negative what? AB. Can have it this way plus negative AB. All right? So at the end of the day, we have AB plus times minus is minus. So we have AB minus AB, and at the end of the day, the thing is what? Zero. So we have two conditions with which we can have a zero vector. Condition number one is when um, a vector is being added to an equal opposite, equal and opposite vector, like what we have here. So we are trying to find the resultant of an equal vector and an opposite vector. So whether it's algebraic or, or, um, or vectorial, the, the addition or I mean, the subtraction of two vectors, like, like addition of a negative of an equal and opposite vector is always equal to what is zero. So we don't need to even start looking for magnitude here. It will still end up being zero. Do you understand it now? Even by calculating the magnitude the traditional way, to still end up in zero. So at the end of the day, we have it that um, the, the resultant vector in this case, like we have a zero vector in this case because we had two vectors that canceled out each other to equal and opposite vectors. So that's condition number one in which we can have what we call a zero or a null vector. Condition number two. Condition number two is when we multiply when we multiply a vector with a scalar zero. When a vector is being multiplied by a scalar zero, when you say scalar zero, which means an ordinary number, which is not a vector, because We'll soon get to that point. We'll realize that vectors can be there. There is something called scalar addition of vector. Okay, like I'm sorry, scalar multiplication of vectors. Like it, we we if if for instance I am applying a force of fifty newton in this direction. Okay, I can I can x five my 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 force. I can multiply my force five times to to have a greater amount of force. So five is not necessarily a vector. But it is just like um, a scalar addition, a, sorry, a scalar multiplication of my initial value of vector. So if I want to increase my vector five times, I need to just multiply the original vector by five. So despite the fact that, okay, this is a vector of 50 Newton, I have the rights to, mathematics allows me to multiply the vector of 50 Newton by five to get 2,500 Newtons. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So we, which means you can multiply a vector by a scalar, it's allowed. So when you now multiply a, a vector with a scalar zero, which are an ordinary zero, not a vectorial zero, then at the end of the day, when you multiply it, it will give you what? Zero. So when you multiply a vector with a scalar zero, so which means if I have a vector A, a vector A, and I multiply it by a scalar zero, that's an ordinary number zero, okay, the result will also be a zero vector. So those are the two conditions. All right, so we start wasting time. Um, Let's move on to the next one. Equal vectors, I've really explained that. Equal vectors are two vectors that are acting, that have the same, exactly the same magnitude. They have exactly the same magnitude. All right, so um, if I have this one, I call it vector AB, okay? And I have this one, vector CD, all right? They are just equal in magnitude. Remember that the length of the vector represents the magnitude, okay, graphically or pictorially or di diagrammatically, as I said earlier. So the magnitude of the vector is represented by the length. So when we have two vectors having equal lengths, we say they are equal. So we say vector AB is equal to what? Vector CD, all right? They are equal vectors, okay? And... Um, when they are equal but opposites and they and you want to find the resultant, that's what leads to zero vector. Okay, so that's that. As for that, so vector equal vectors are vectors um, having the same magnitude. All right, <clears throat> position vectors here in this case. All right, position vectors are vectors that are fixed to a particular point. Position vectors are fixed to a point. All right. All the vectors we've been dealing with earlier, since we started this journey of vectors, all of the vectors we have been dealing with, they're all examples of position vectors. They're all position vectors. 
you understand all of them so um but then you know because they are tied to a particular axis and then the, the other end flows freely but the one end is tied down the other end flows freely all right so we call that kind of vector a position vector they usually start from an origin so if you have this as p you say op is a position vector but then the other one that you have is the displacement vector displacement vector in the own case they are free vectors they are not tied to a particular point they are free vectors you know if i have this like this i can have this one okay i can have this this way i can have it this way you know i can have this one acting in this direction i can have all of these vectors okay if i say this is a b c d all right so vector a vector b vector c and vector d are all what they are free vectors they are displacement vectors all right they are not tied to a fixed point and that is that as per that i think we are we are done with this so this fix this the story of displacement vector leads to another topic in vectors which we are going to address it leads to another matter in vectors which we are going to address um in the next video all right then see you there bye